the epitome of a small town girl with big dreams, Deandra as Beatty knew she wanted to be one of the best bowlers in the world. Get, get. With a dominant collegiate career, over 50 international medals with Team USA, and a three-time World Bowler of the Year, she has earned her place in bowling history. As Beatty grew up in a small town in Indiana, where her love for the sport began. For me, it was my grandma. My grandma Betty um, is the reason. She bowled socially every Wednesday night. and. My sister and I would go watch her bowl every Wednesday night, and then when I was about five, she gave me my first bowling ball, and my sister was eight, and we just did it for fun. I mean, I have so many interesting memories, like my grandma Betty loved ladybugs, and every single time I competed, she was always my biggest fan. She was always the loudest fan, and she always pinned a ladybug pin on my bowling shirt, and I would wear it on my collar. And that's why on all of my jerseys now, there, you, you can find a ladybug on it somewhere. Got it. For my grandma. For my grandma. For my grandma. In her collegiate career, she holds two national collegiate bowling titles, was a two-time first team All-American, and was named Student Athlete of the Year in 2002. My biggest influence when I was young was my sister Cassie. And I was in her footsteps for most of my career uh, early on. And I didn't mind it because her footsteps were big enough for me to follow in. She won the Alberta Crow Star tomorrow. I won the Alberta Crow Star tomorrow. You know, she won state tournament. I won state tournament. City, check. Like, she showed me what was possible. And then I went and did it. At the end of the f my freshman year, we, we made it to the nationals. It was in Wichita and um, we won in Wichita. And that was the first time in my bowling life that I had done something that Cassie had not. And she was the first person that, that came up to me while I was still on the approach celebrating with my team. And I really believe that that was the moment that I became Deandra. At the end of her collegiate career, the professional women's bowling tour had ceased operations, but as Beatty found other ways of promoting the sport of bowling by becoming the face of Team USA, which kept the sport of women's bowling top of mind and helped lead to the relaunch of the PWBA in 2015. I dedicated 15 years of my life to Team USA, uh, and it was just, it's, it was such an honor. It is such an honor to be able to say that my first Team USA coach, Palmer Falgren, thought that I could be a somebody. And he took a chance on me. And he brought an 18-year-old girl to the World Championships in Abu Dhabi. And it was at that event that I saw the USA win the first gold medal I had ever seen Team USA win. After the Abu Dhabi Championships, I was able to bowl in Malaysia is in 2003 and I, I broke some records for, for the blocks. Um, I won the gold medal. The next world championship was in Mexico and I was able to defend that title, the world championship. And it's because of the coaching. It's because I had good support behind me. That was um, one of my career highlights to be able to say that I won the World Cup. One of the biggest highlights of her career came in 2012, when she won the USBC Queens against Hall of Famer Carolyn Dorn Ballard. It is appropriate that she has another strike. She has been brilliant. Winning the USBC Queens was really uh, a turning point in my career because I, I had a 14-month-old boy at home, and I went to this event and proved to myself that I can still do this on my terms. To be able to step up in the 10th and strike to win against a Hall of Famer, Carolyn Doran Ballard, that was uh, obviously a highlight of my, my whole career. It proved to me like 
I can be a great mom and I can still be a great bowler and uh, things look different and that's okay. It's hard. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no way around it, you know, but being here, making it here and turning around and seeing my children, I just, how could I lose? As Beatty continues to inspire the next generation of bowlers and gives back to the sport every chance she gets, holding lessons at her home center and as co-founder of the Elite Youth Tour. I imagine a little girl uh, and her family walking through the... <sighs> the walls of the Hall of Fame. And seeing my picture and the little girl stops. And she says, that's the bowler that was a world champion, a mom, a change maker. I want my legacy to be that I, I left bowling better than I found it. In the category of superior performance, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Deandra Asvedi to the USBC Hall of Fame. My heart is so full. And look at all of you guys. It was late on a school night in 1991. There was smoke in the air from the men's league that just finished up. And there was an 11 year old girl with her sister waiting for her lane to be turned on. Her feet dangled from the chair that she sat in, shoes tied in double knots. She was just a girl from a small town with some of the biggest dreams that have ever been dreamt. What I didn't know then that I know now is that bowling would teach me everything I needed to know about life. Bowling's basically been my life coach. And in the beginning, I was just hanging out at the bowling center. I'd throw a few shots, then run to the Adams Family pinball machine to play a game, then back to bowl, then back to the game room. I was a bit of a loose cannon bopping around the bowling center. What was the first lesson that bowling taught me? You get out what you put in. My sister Cassie was the first one to demonstrate that. She never ran to the pinball machines. She stayed down on the lanes, practicing, never taking breaks. That intentional practice led her to win city titles, then state and national titles. And it wasn't long before I was sitting in the bright blue chairs at Stardust Bowl Three in Dyer, Indiana, down by the lanes thinking, I want that. I want to win. So thank you, Cassie, for showing me that you don't win bowling titles playing pinball. <laughs> my trips to the Adams Family pinball machine became less and less, while my big sister Cassie was being coached by our childhood coach Mr. Dick Tucker, Mr. T, as we call them, I would inch myself closer to the conversation. I needed to know the secrets. Mr. Tucker was instrumental in helping me develop this love for bowling and showing me where it could actually take us. What I realized during those nights of practice were a few things. One, my parents had to be a little crazy for allowing us to practice at 9.30 p.m. until midnight every single night. I mean, what? 
that the sport wasn't simple. There were a lot of moving parts to it, but that challenge intrigued me. That I had, I was lucky to have some crazy parents that enabled me to dream really big and that understood to get crazy good results, you sometimes have to do crazy things. So thank you, mom and dad. Thank you, mom, for making me take a nap after school, finish my homework, and prioritize grades. And thank you, dad, for taking Cassie and I to practice every single night. I cannot think of anyone who has showed up for me more than you have. And I also realized during those late night practices that if I committed to something and truly believed in it, my dreams maybe could come true too. And I knew that was possible because whenever it was on, I'd watch the Ladies Professional Bowlers Tour. Anyone else watch the LPBT? I'd show up at Pro-Ams at Olympia Lanes in Munster, Indiana with the hopes of bowling with Leanne Barrett, Winnie McPherson, Kim Terrell, Jeannie Maiden, or getting my bowling pin signed by Carolyn Doran Ballard, Dana Miller Mackey, Sandra Jo Shirey, Lisa Wagner, all in the Hall of Fame. It could have ended before I started, before it started on Saturday mornings after watching my favorite Saturday morning TV show, Saved by the Bell. <laughs> I heard the honking of my grandma's big red Cadillac outside my front door. She drove me to Saturday morning league when I was five years old. She was our scorekeeper, like hand scorekeeper. She spent her Saturday mornings with my teammates and me at Stardust Bowl three, watching us throw gutter balls. There were no bumpers. My grandma would tell me the story of how I would throw so many gutters, it would bring me to tears. The frustration that I felt. Grandma Betty would threaten me on the way to Saturday Morning League. If you cry today, Deandra, we're gonna go home. So I swallowed my tears. You know what that five-year-old little girl could have done? Literally anything else that didn't make her cry. But she kept showing up purple swirly ball that Grandma Betty gave her in hand, determined to keep her ball on the lane. And that brings me to the second life lesson that bowling taught me. You will get knocked down. You have the choice to get back up again. By the time I was 12 years old, I had very clear dreams. I wanted to be one of the best bowlers in the world. People in my small town of Dyer, Indiana, would look at me like, who do you think you are that you think you can be the best in the world at anything? But I was crazy enough to actually believe that I could. And before I became one of the best, I failed a lot. Many people remember that I won the USBC Queens in 2012. But many forget five years earlier I lost it in 2007. And at that time, I was 26 year old, and it was my first chance to win a professional title. Started out really good. In fact, I kind of dominated the whole week. There was no PWBA, but there it was, a chance to win a title in a major. It was my first time bowling on live TV, and I proceeded to make every mental mistake in the book on live TV. I rushed, I worried, I couldn't focus, and before I knew it, I was watching Hall of Famer Kelly Kulik accept the tiara that I thought was mine. I mean, she totally crushed me, she totally deserved it. Kelly, Kelly you deserved it. <laughs> don't, don't YouTube that match. <laughs> In 2012, I was back at the Queens. This time I was the third seed on the show. I was an exhausted mom trying to juggle all the new jobs in my life and feeling very mediocre at all of them. But when I bowled my way onto that show, I remember thinking, no matter what, I want people to watch me bowl on TV 
and see how much I love this sport. And for those who have had that honor of bowling at TV, you know how hard it is to just be. But I remember slowing things down, smiling at the little girl in the crowd with the sign that read, Deandra Rocks. I remember feeling honored to be able to do what I love for everyone to see on TV. This time, I was able to learn from my mistakes from five years earlier. And I was so grateful for that lesson. I won the Queens in 2012 because I'd lost it in 2007. The next life lesson I learned from bowling is this. People will try to define you, but you get to write your own story. You control the narrative. So when others try to tell you who you are, remember, only you have the power to do that. Some may think it was an effortless journey here. It's because they see the resume, the accolades, the medals, the titles. Not many see the journey, the tears, the sitting in front of my refrigerator on the floor of my first condo in Chicago, crying my eyes out because I didn't think and I didn't feel worthy. I just didn't feel good enough because other people told me that. And for that split second on that kitchen floor, I believed it until I didn't until I decided I would pave my own road, write my own narrative. In my career, I've learned that if you showed up for practice early and you stay late and you insist on getting all your questions answered, it'll be seen as special treatment by others. If you have conviction and offer suggestions on the team, you could be deemed a know-it-all. If you have strong leadership skills, Others will call you bossy, and other B words. <laughs> and if you are genuinely kind, you'll be called fake. It wasn't always easy to be authentic. Lesson number four, literally anything can happen. Be ready, don't think too hard about it, and go for it. They say before you die, memories of your life flash before your eyes. And this is what happened when USBC President <laughs> Melissa McDaniel told me I was gonna be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Flashes of my career in a real specific moments, like my first professional title in 2007. This one was possible because the great Robin Romeo slammed her thumb into a car door. Sounds like I'm making this up. I'm not. It was the days of the PBA Women's Series. I was the alternate. I didn't make the exempt field. Well, until sadly, Robin slammed her thumb into a car door. I happened to be in Grand Rapids, Michigan at a bowling shoe photo shoot. I received a call from the tournament director, Kirk Von Kruger, and he said, if you're still in town, you should come over here because it doesn't look like Robin's gonna bowl and you're next in line. So I went, found Robin, who told me she couldn't compete and I told her, when I win, I'll send her a check for her flight. And after I won, I did. Robin, is your, is your thumb okay? Give, give us a thumbs up. Okay, good. <laughs> my next lesson reminds me of my very first college class ever. It was sociology, the study of people. I sat in a humongous lecture hall at the University of Nebraska listening to a professor talk about how you will only have a handful of really close relationships in your life. And at that time, I thought he was crazy. I had so many friends. Later in life, I realized he was right, and I understood that lesson. So lesson number five of 134. Don't worry, I'm not bringing you all of them tonight, even though I could probably talk all night. I won't. Find your people, keep them close. At the top of my list is my husband, John. We have college bowling to thank for finding each other. Rumor has it my ponytail caught his eye in a bowling magazine where I was featured for winning the Alberti Crow Star of Tomorrow. He found me on AOL Instant Messenger, and here we are. <laughs> Amazing, really, that 
I found someone to experience all my highs and all my lows with, truly. From 1998 on, John has been my first hug after my biggest win and my first hug after a disastrous event. His love and belief in me has never wavered. You are the biggest reason that I have the confidence to be unapologetically me. Next on my list are our two incredible kids, my son, Madden, and daughter, Jersey. Madden, remember when we won that professional title together? The one where we helped Brian Voss win his 25th title? I had your heartbeat inside me, and I always said that was the reason I bowled so well. When I won my latest title last July with EJ Tackett, you literally did not miss a shot that we threw. Even though your heart isn't contained in my body anymore, I always feel it with me. Your empathy is endearing and your intuition is admirable. Jersey, to be able to raise a strong girl in our society has been such an honor. You will be called bossy, lead anyway. You will be called fake, still be kind. There will be people who will tell you that you cannot do it. And I hope your response will be, watch me. When you were eight, you told me that if you could have any superpower in the world, it would be that when you look at other people, you know their stories. And that took my breath away because what eight-year-old says that? You are magical and kind, and you are already changing the world. Keep seeking other people's stories. To the Hall of Fame Committee and the USBC, thank you for this overwhelming honor. To the other inductees, thank you for being so, so inspiring. Thank you to my Team USA coaches and teammates. Palmer Falgren, who believed in me when I was a nobody, but believed I could be a somebody. To Fred Borden, who taught me, be careful what you think about, because it might come true. To Jerry Edwards, who taught me that you could be fierce and have grace on the lanes. Thank you, Gordon Vatican, Susie Minshew, Tom Lumkel, Jeff McCorvey, Ken Yakabaski, Brian O'Keefe, Rod Ross. You allowed me to feel the most honorable feeling that I will never forget listening to my national anthem play while having a gold medal placed around my neck. To my Team USA teammates, there are way too many of you to name. You know who you are, and thank you. To my college coaches, Bill Straub and Paul Klempa, who my freshman year of college mainly showed me that I had a lot to learn, but who took the time to answer all my questions and lead my team and I to two national championships. Thank you, Coach Klempa and his wife, Leanna, for being here tonight. I will never forget how at home I felt at Nebraska. I will also never forget your terrible dad jokes. <laughs> I've always said that it's at Nebraska where I truly learned how to bowl. To my career coaches, Dr. Dean Hennitz, Bill Spigner, Ron Hoppe, Will Clark, Jason Belmonte, and especially DJ Hayes. DJ has invested so much time and wisdom over the last 20 years. He repeatedly has shown up for me at 9 a.m., at 9 p.m., it didn't matter. He was always there willing to help, even if we had to train during Cosmic Bowl. Thanks to my sponsors for taking a chance on a small town girl with big dreams. Brunswick for the boost in the beginning of my career. To Storm, Bill and Barb Christman, for believing in me the last 12 years. What you give back to the sport is so admirable and motivates me to do more. I am so honored to be able to throw the best bowling balls in the world and to win with them. To Turbo and Lori Mraz, for being my grip of choice my entire career. H5G, for allowing me to shine bright on the lanes. 
to my ball reps for helping me choose the right ball to throw. Rick Benoit, Chuck Gardner, Del Ballard Jr., Chris Schlemmer, Hank Boomershine, Jim Callahan, Matt McNeil, Sean Ryan, Steve Jacobs, Steve Klumpkin. What an honor it has been to bowl with you guys behind me. I cannot believe my best friends came to celebrate with me tonight. I mean, I can because they always show up for me. But we're usually like on a beach in like Cabo or, or Playa del Carmen. Allison and Mike, Nancy and Tony, Jess, Kate, it means the world to me that you came to celebrate with me. My niece, Kyler, and brother-in-law, Scott, are also here with my sister, Cassie, who flew in from Virginia. Thank you to Mark Iverson, the owner of Diversity River Bowl in Chicago, and Gary, a former owner. Thank you for being here tonight and for opening your doors to me like you knew me, you've known me forever. I spent countless hours at Diversity trying to get it right. I used to say to myself, this one's for the win, while I threw my ball down lane 36, right next to the wall with the murals of Mark Roth, Earl Anthony, and me. Thank you to the Barton family, Stardust Bowl Three in Dyer, Indiana, and to the bowling trailblazers that I've had the honor of knowing. Joan Romeo, Joyce Deitch, Pearl Keller, Joan Feinblum, Tom Clark, John Janowitz, Tim Mack. To the writers who invested so much time to cover all of our accomplishments so that others knew what was possible. Jim Dressel, Bob Johnson, Bill Vint, Lucas Wiseman, Matt Canizzaro, John Mark, George Wooten. And finally, thank you to Eric Hartman for the hours and hours of time that he spent in nominating me. Bowling is so lucky to have such a great historian of our sport. He emailed me in 2020 and he said, you're gonna be eligible to be nominated for the Hall of Fame in a couple years, and I would like to nominate you. I didn't even know him. He spent hours and hours writing a resume better than the one that I was actually keeping for myself, which is extraordinary, and I am so grateful. I've been able to ride a camel in Abu Dhabi, an elephant in Thailand. I've had the honor of seeing the most magical wonders of the world. I've met the best people from all around the world. I've learned about the most interesting cultures, all because of bowling. People always ask me what I want my legacy to be, and my answer is that I want to leave the sport better than I found it. And every month, I'm inspired by my elite youth tour bowlers, the nonprofit that I founded in 2012 that empowers young leaders to build strong communities and create positive social change through bowling. The EYT inspires young bowlers to leave your mark on and beyond the lanes. Bowling has taken me to 30, over 30 countries. I've won a lot. I've lost a lot, but most importantly, in the end, I know that I was able to use bowling as a vehicle to do good, and what an honor that has been. Thank you so much. <laughs>